There's a flag! The French, and they're rounding on us! Uh, and we were curious, so how do you pronounce it? My name is Carmine. No, that's not how you say it. But that's not important right now, mister. What's important is that you have a good time singing it. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? See these plays develop, and it just becomes kind of, not ping pong, but just playing rock, paper, scissors in the midfield until eventually something kind of squirts oh, in. And now another my. one, Batira off the backboard. Carmine Corp looking amazing. Batira sharp as a knife. Look at him cut through moist. Arrêtez, on est en 2-0 pour l'instant avec Batira qui va toucher ce ballon très doucement. Wally qui ne prendra pas du coup ce duel ici. C'est passé directement. Il reste plus que Archie en défense. Exotique, on exotique, 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 la la frappe. Frappe. Oh, exotique, exotique, la frappe. La frappe est folle. K-Corn, à front, à Tachi, pass to Batira. Denied by Fairy Peak, who left the ground with five boosts and still somehow made it. Demo. A demo to open it up. A Tachi to the bike. Oh. Oh. Zero seconds at K-Corn. Finally, breakthrough story! They took out the one guy who could keep it all away. Kate up, try as he might. Unfortunately, a few picks are too As we look around the current RLCS landscape, we are truly blessed as fans. In North America, we have a trove of teams vying for a few roster spots in an uber competitive region. Around the world, we have international competitions at levels we've rarely seen previously. And in Europe, we have multiple teams amassing top talent together to form some truly elite squads. There are strong arguments to be made for nearly a dozen teams heading into this next LAN event, but today I'd like to break an argument for a team that I think has the chops to be the top dogs, Carmine Corps. Another French super team has formed under one of the scene's biggest organizations, only holding on to Moroccan midfielder Atachi from last season's impressive run. Coring out Nali, who flew out west to North America to bully that region like I bullied my younger brother on the basketball court out front of our house, and they effectively swapped out their superstar Astral for a, another superstar in his own right, Vatira from Moist, in a pretty surprising switch. So when all was said and done, we had Itachi, Vatira, and Exotic, a fairly unknown commodity from Semper Esports, who completed the revamped Blue Wall. So with Vatira taking over the primary playmaking and dynamic scoring roles, Exotic finding a bigger role on the heels of a very impressive Worlds playoff run, and Itachi returning as the veteran anchor, KC was immediately replenished as one of the most compelling teams in Europe. Now that we have a split under our belts and we dissect our teams heading into the fall major, let's dive a bit deeper into the players, play styles, and stats that make Carmen Core one of the best, if not the best, team in the world at this point in time. Dispatching every top team the region has to offer, some on multiple occasions, Carmen Core have created one of the world's strongest resumes to get to this point. Now, talking about our players, the star of the show is Vatira. One of the world's most impressive scorers, Vatira is sensationally gifted as an aerial player who seemingly always has enough boost to get to any ball for a miraculous play. Vatira possesses one of the rarest gifts in the RLCS and that is dynamic playmaking. This means not only is he a threat to score miraculous goals, save unsavable shots, and make unthinkable passes, but he also allows his teammates to be better based on the gravity he pulls to himself on the pitch. Like we were talking about a bit earlier, Exotic is a fairly unknown commodity. What we've already learned about Exotic is that he is a quick-minded player that nearly always finds himself in positions to make a play for KC. Whether he's repositioning off ball, waiting for a pass, rotating wide to cover his own net, while also staying within the play, or Contorting midfield to make a play on the ball to improve his teammates' odds, Exotic seems to rarely find himself in a position he can't be effective in. Itachi has long been a player I've admired, slowly but steadily improving his mechanics, game sense, and melded himself into a truly elite piece for championship hopeful teams. Last season for KC, Itachi was critical in deep runs to place fourth in the spring major and to make the World Championship quarterfinals. One of Itachi's calling cards has long been his ability to disrupt opponents' flow by constantly applying pressure. 
cutting rotations, debilitating 50-50s, and seemingly unending momentum gathered from excellent small pad play in the middle of the pitch. Itachi is more than just a glorified sidekick for Batira, he has developed into a truly gifted offensive player in his own right, delivering some downright impressive goals to go alongside his litany of other tried and true skills. The path to Rotterdam was secured before the third regional even began for this team, but this didn't stop them from making the third grand finals appearance. Something I've always found valuable is teams who show up regardless of the consequences. The same praise that's been given to a team like Gen G, who still fought hard even when they'd already qualified, that, that means a lot to me. It means that the team is cohesive. They want this. They're not just trying to get to the finish line, but sprint through it. Uh, I, I, I think that's important mentally. In Swiss, Carmine have hit the trifecta of winning results going 3-0, 3-1, and 3-2 in their events, which I think is a good sign for a team. I mean, there's certainly some negatives, but to me it says they can handle easy runs and just, you know, make it to the playoffs, or they can sneak in and not have their mentality waver. No matter what their Swiss has looked like, they've always looked great in playoffs. To begin the fall open, Carmine collected big wins against Team Liquid and G1. They dropped a five game series to BDS. In the playoffs, they handled Tundra and Moist with ease, averaging well over two goals per game in each contest. Then they ran up against Oxygen in the finals, and frankly, they had their butts handed to them. But as CJCJ has gone on the record as saying, that Oxygen team we saw from the first event, the fall open, was probably if not the best one of the best rocket league performances we have seen from a team at this split in the fall cup carmen had a rougher swiss needing the full five rounds to make it into the playoffs dominant wins against heat and team go were interspersed with rematch losses to g1 and moist and in round five KC drew Team Liquid once more, and Vatira's impossibly strong performance dropping a 1.6 rating on 64% shooting woo, was way too much for Liquid to overcome yet again. Marching into the playoffs, proving once again that Swiss doesn't always give insights into the playoffs. They chewed out a tightly contested seven game series against BDS and that catapulted Casey into another 4-1 thrashing of Moist Esports. In their second grand finals of the split, the Exotic and Vatira scoring tandem let them run away with a victory over Quadrant despite an eye-popping performance from EXO in that series. And like I've already beaten the dead horse on, despite qualifying for the major, this wasn't enough for Carmine who came ready to play for the Invitational. They went 3-0 in Swiss, they took down a feisty Williams Resolve team that would drop BDS and Moist in Swiss. Carmine turned around in round two and dropped Oxygen. The high-powered team were looking to use this opportunity to prove the doubters wrong, but unfortunately Carmine wasn't having any of it. And finally, Solary caught Carmine for the second time this split and they were rolled by Carmine easily 3-0 sweep. In the playoffs, hey there Solary, we've missed you. Solary once more comes up against him, gets dropped like a sack of potatoes in a 4-0 sweep. Carmine pushed through a high-octane six-game series against G1 in the semifinals, which was huge, as G1 needed this matchup to keep their playoffs hopes alive. Finally, Carmine did what Gen G had done before them. They reached all three grand finals for the split, and in this matchup, Casey ultimately succumbed to a Team Liquid roster who lived up to their potential and bested Vatira and company in six games. Now that we know about our players and the path they took to get here, let's wrap up with some stats about what has led Carmine's success up until this point. In my opinion, Carmine's strongest attribute through this split has been their offensive pressure. Carmine is a team that ranks among the top in goals per game, shots per game, but remain among the bottom for saves. This isn't due to any poor defensive traits or patterns, but rather they rarely find themselves in positions to need to make saves. This is further explained by Carmine only allowing seven shots per game, which puts them alongside teams like G2, Moist, and Liquid, whose primary identities are as pressure-inducing teams. Very few teams spend as a little time as Carmine Core in their own defensive half, but this does not mean they are a team that constantly overcommits. 
Rather, they rank among the top group in both time spent in the offensive third and middle third, showing they are a team that while they do look to pressure, it's not an all-in forward effort like we've seen from teams like Liquid in the past. Carmine's lack of physicality is honestly rare amongst top teams these days. We look at squads like V1, Optic, Space Station Gaming, who are averaging anywhere from 4.3 demos per game all the way up to version 1, who is above 5 per game. Carmine, on the other hand, rank near the absolute bottom with their 2.63 demos, ranking them third lowest for teams out of the major regions who qualified for these stats. Statistically, Exotic is in the middle of the team on every single core stat, and although Vatira is one of the leaders in percent of time most forward, his team leading save averages show he is someone who can rotate the full length of the pitch into ideal positions. Surprisingly to me, I think about Vatira as the primary offensive threat for this team, and he is, but with that said, when tallying which players take the most shots and score the most goals in series, Exotic actually has scored the most goals for Carmine in 13 series, while Vatira and Itachi have both led the team in 8 series apiece. This leads me to believe that when Vatira is on, he is really on fire, but Exotic's consistent offensive output allows him to outscore over the course of a series. Overall, they have dominated one of the primary regions in a remarkable fashion. They are the only NAEU team to not have a losing record to any team, and they look to continue this dominance in their first land together. As one of the 10 teams in Rotterdam with full rosters that have land experience, if I had to make a case for some concern or pause for this team, I would say that we have yet to see Itachi and Exotic perform in this environment as frontrunners. I think most of people in the world have Carmine as the top team, certainly out of their own region, and a lot of people, I think, from the world as well. Um, so we're going to see what they look like with the lights being bright and all the pressure on them. Few teams have as strong of a case as Carmine as to why they should win the major, and while I wouldn't be surprised if nearly half the teams in this tournament win it all, Carmine remain atop my short list of teams to win the whole thing. It's not a hot take, but Occam's Razor, the take that makes the most sense, is usually true. I think Carmine have looked the best uh, out of any of the teams that will be participating over the course of this first split. We'll be able to find out in a few weeks in Rotterdam, and until then, I'll continue to create content about the players and teams attending, specifically how they have looked statistically leading up to this event. As always, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, take it easy.